Is that us back in the go, big man? That's us live. And it's that amazing. Look at that tiny wee box. It's just a miracle. Just, the, um, a miracle of modern science, modern. We big tech? No, I don't think we're big tech, you and I. No. Not we, at all. we don't come, fall under the gambit of Google <laughs> or, uh, or Twitter or anything like that. We're just sure a two bob outfit, right. aren't we? So, it's come out of um, the Hilton in Bells Hill to have a bowl of soup with my friend Frank Devine here, and we were talking about how it was 10 years ago that. I was last in here mm -hmm. because I came back. I was living in, I was living in, I was living in Atlanta, Georgia, in America. I was staying in Atlanta, Georgia, and I had heard that Francis had started to do some soul nights again, and there was one in here, and I came back for that, and um, met a lot of old faces back then, and mm -hmm. um, Francis and I reconnected after. Uh, a lot of years of being away from the rave scene and the party scene and um, we've been in touch and anyway we were just sitting here talking about mental health and sobriety and but Bob we managed to go into the fact that I think it's I'm 10 years sober uh, February the 4th February the 4th of uh, 2011 so you're coming up yep yep aye and it, we're, 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 we're mentioned there about how a lot of people would would, would kind of be saying or discussing or saying about how it's a shame, you must be missing so much. Uh, nobody able to drink or nobody able to party and all that. In actual fact, you're not missing anything at all. But uh, folks, say, folks say to you, it's a shame you can't have a drink. Nah, you I, still get that? Oh, aye, aye. And looking at you, you know, be big sheepish eyes, as if you say, it's a shame for you, isn't it? As if you're missing that much. As if you've not done anything in the 10 years, something been a 10 year period when all you've done actually is, well, within the context of other issues you're having to deal with, you're kind of achieving things all the time, things that are far more positive, and things you're going to look back at in years to come. If you're lucky enough, and if God spares you, uh, to have these years in the future to look back and say, God, I'm so glad I've done A, B, C and D. And that's a big thing as well, is being able to look back, reflect on things, but reflect, no regret, and no we saying I wish I had that I wish I had a done but no take the chances that you're getting when you get the chances and doing something that's positive that's functional to your life that's you no know, generally gonna help you move forward and no have they kind of massive regrets that, that you probably and I certainly did right. have because we're talking about uh, the the Lanarkshire Soul Collective event in here. Uh, I mean, I can't really remember much about it because I was mad with it. Uh, you know, I can remember wee bits here and there, but that's not really... Like a blank. On reflection, looking back and stuff, you say... Nay good. Nay good. I prefer to have a clear head now and look back and enjoy things as and when they happen. We were just sitting, we were just sitting there trying to dot back a timeline mm -hmm. because I was living in... You were in Atlanta. America? I was living yeah. in America and I come back for the week I came back for the week for America. I done the night out, flew back home, and then I came back to set up my business because I was doing counselling. I was in New Lanark. Yes. And that's yeah. what we spoke about because on the, that suit was lovely. Thank Enjoy you very much. It was so really was nice. the coffee? Beautiful. 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 We're just, we're just the bourgeois. The, sorry, the latte. The latte. We're doing a wee live. You want to come in? How are you? I'm just kind of interviewing and asking them questions and stuff. Well, I'm quite are famous. So. Are you famous? Ah, in right, main right, heat. I'll say hello. In huh? main heat. Hiya. What's your name then? Frank. Frank Devine. I'm Ross. Frank Ross Devine. Hislop. Frank Devine and Ross Hislop. What's in, boy? I've never heard you. It's only... It's, it's, it's a niche market. I'm a, it's all niche people that know me. <laughs> right. 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 Um, so we were doing a timeline and mm -hmm. then I had just started my business. I just started my business doing counselling in New Lanark. Yeah. And you came down... Well... And, and you never came for... You never came for counselling. Well, I, I was determined not to stop drinking, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. And I remember you... It just shows you how things can happen in the past, but, you know, at the time, it's like planting a seed. Obviously, you planted a seed with me then that got me thinking that this is a most unproductive way to live your life. You never said that to me, of course, 
But that was it. There's a sort of a. I think there's a kind of nar there's narratives. There's 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 overt narratives and there's hidden narratives in any relationship, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same way. Kind of, I'm a I'm a big person. I'm into like linguistics. I'm really into linguistics, and I believe there's narratives. There's open narratives that people. You know, there's narratives. For instance, there's a book, or there's there's a documentation, with there's words on it. As the the the, the, written, the written narrative, there's also hidden narratives. It's like history. There's mm -hmm. histories and there's hidden histories. Well, I think it was the same with you and I, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I was the up that he stopped drinking. But you fascinated me. You though there's something about there's an aura about you, and that kind of attracted me to you. So I was maybe wanting to go up there and still. I was that following my own ego mm -hmm. that I was determined to go and listen to you and try and, and, try and show you how superior I was, how ridiculous wow. that could be when you see it now. Wow. But I was not going to give up anything because I knew better than you. Yeah, yeah. And Don't I didn't need though? you to tell you. Oh, but it's absolutely... So it's, sick. A, it's an We're absolute so, so sickness, sick. aye. So you well. think you, you, you can... Uh, you, you, nobody can help you. you. Nobody can tell me anything. I know everything. I'm superior to everybody, which is a no. It's really what when, a terrible mindset. It's mindset. absolutely horrendous a because terrible, you're terrible never going to learn anything until you're humble, until you're able to accept your shortcomings your and sh your failings. Oh man, absolutely, absolutely. So Thank we were sitting, we were sitting here, and um, and uh, the, the, the 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 woman came over and said. Can I get you a cup of coffee or anything like that? And I said, no, no. Frank said, do you want a cake? And I said, no, I'm half sugar now. And um, I'm half sugar now. I said, so, you know, I've still got that habit to break, uh, uh, my destructive relationship with sugar. So I said, I'll have a wee, um, I'll have a wee soup. No bread. I'm off sugar, wheat and dairy at the moment. That's me getting into two weeks of sobriety from my, um, my carbohydrates that I consume way too much of. <laughs> Right, and um, I was saying to I was saying to Frank there that I did a a week juice fast, and then I went for a coffee enema, and then I've just been preparing really good organic soups and homemade food, and I've started to nourish myself better because I hadn't been eating correctly at all. And Frank said to me, he goes, "Fruit, so expensive, isn't it?" I'm like, I'm like a fiver a day, and I went. So is cocaine, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't, no, but see, this is that. This is all, a lot of his doing and I believe this most sincerely. A lot of this is doing to the value you place in certain things and on your at certain self. times absolutely. in your life. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you'll, you'll not think nothing about spending tons of money in drugs or tons of money in drink, which shows you how, you know, it's like we were talking earlier as well about how you can get caught into certain world views, or there was a one thing that you used, and I, I can't even remember the actual term. What were we talking about? I can't even remember. We were talking about that many different things. Is it today? I have ten minutes ago before we come on here, if you like. I just said we're sick. Did it, did it, I, we're, we're all sick, we're insane. <laughs> but how you get caught in snow, it's like no being willing to see. It's like what you said earlier was uh, you can live in the three old channels Aye. BBC One, BBC Two. Aye, and it's ten o'clock. and then Channel Four comes and then ten o'clock at night. It goes fuzzy. <laughs> Aye, but but no, but no being willing to comprehend alternative worldviews or an alternative world. I was I'm not even talking about politics. I was stuck in a group for about forty years mm -hmm. because I, I got myself. I got I, I actually cemented myself into. A, I've said this a few times. An ideological silo. You know, I was caught in that silo and I didn't want to accept it was another way of looking at the world. Mm -hmm. And it's her no. So, it's so I limited. rejected it's everything that didn't fit in with my ideological underpinnings. I rejected it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was doing I was, poverty, intellectual poverty, that I wasn't able to comprehend alternative ways of looking at the world. Or alternative ways. No, it, it's so just, what, what, what do you think the poverty stricken mindset of the addict or the user or the person that you know, they might not see themselves as having a problem, but they're impoverished in so many ways that they'll think nothing and go out and spend a hundred quid on a night out drinking, uh -huh. drinking, and what have you. But they'll not perhaps nourish themselves right in the right ways with the right friends and the right people in the right places and the right things. And they're looking, 
they're looking. So, how can we discuss a narrative that could perhaps land in the mind of somebody that's still perpetually using alcohol or substances that 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 that's stuck on those three channels that's stuck in BBC uh-huh. One, where in actual fact there's there's a there's a whole other array of sets and channels and behaviours that they can be participating in. Uh, and that's a million dollar question, Ross, because, I mean, at the moment, I'm on a 12-step programme. However, I'm dead aware that there's brilliant critiques of 12-step programmes. Fantastic. In fact, I was reading one uh, just a couple of days ago. It was in the, the Atlantic, the American magazine, the Atlantic. There was a brilliant critique of a 12-step programme saying when the, the 12-step programme's first sort of a... We're talking about 1935 or 1936. The study of the brain mm-hmm. was in its infancy. Sure. In 1935. So there's been great strides in, in, in the sciences. Mm-hmm. So, and there's a lot of different ways you say no. And a lot of people would say there's need, looking at people who have got drug or alcohol problems or any 12 step program, that that's not necessarily the way, the only way that people can be treated. There's other ways they can be treated. Personally speaking, I'm sick of trying to, you know, because I, I, you know, I can remember a million, I can't even remember, my, I can remember the Mondays, uh, swearing to myself and praying, I'm never doing, I'm again. Never doing this again, Sake the heart of Jesus, please help me, get me half drink, get me half drugs, whatever, but I wasn't able to, no, I couldn't, I couldn't sustain, I couldn't actually, no, I couldn't actually because I was weak. Uh, well, was so, it weakness? Well, is it weakness? Or is it self-will? I mean, so if it's self-will, what we need to say then is, if it's self-will, you're al- uh, allowing your self-will, your ego is taking over. Your ego's your running ego's, the show. Your ego's, your ego's running ego's the show, show. And your e- ego is, is destroying your life. Now, or, For its own singular narrative to stay on the throne. I think so, aye. No, I, I want you to have no been willing to say, I fucked up here, I can't say, I can't, I can't no, I need help, mm-hmm. and so many people can't ask for help. Correct. Absolutely. And that's good. It's partly good ego. I can, ego. How can I it's allow? Not knowing how to be with vulnerability. I think so. I I think it's so. Perceiving and asking for help is a weakness, but it's their strength actually. Of course, it absolutely. is. absolutely. You know. So that's one one, one dimension. It, I think there's a there's but other our society. Our society on whole is paying penance and worship to a narrow, a singulate of separation. We're mm-hmm. worshipping separation. Mm-hmm. We're getting more and more disconnected from one another and ourselves. And the only time so many people feel as if they are connected to one another is when they've guzzled a few pints, mm-hmm. shared a 20 pound note, Aye. started nabbling a whole lot of nonsense to See, one another. They, uh, yeah, absolutely. But you know what I think is a big thing here as well is, you know, if you look, no, it's be, no natural be, that being yourself. How can you be? You no, know, if you've got to take something to qualitatively and quantitatively move away from the self. If you're yeah. taking drugs or drinking or whatever, or a million other things, it could be an obsession about sex or chocolate, as you and I were discussing chocolate. earlier on. Uh, so all these things. Are, no, but what, I'm, what I think what I'm trying to say is. Behaviour and how you treat other people is one dimension to us. So if you're treating people seriously up front in an honest manner, are you able to do right. that when you're drinking or shooting drugs? Or? Okay, that's good, right? So to swing on that, right? Uh, passage in the Bible, the, new, the, the, the book of Matthew, love your neighbour as yourself, right? right. Love your neighbour as yourself. So we were programmed into doing that, into loving our neighbour. Mm-hmm. But when when you have no qualitative love for the self, you are then attempting to give love to the neighbour from a, from a false self, mm-hmm. and then you have resentment. So if you're doing things for people and have any resentment about doing them, you're not giving from the right place, you're not giving from an altruistic mindset. You're given. You're given from a place of um, I've been conditioned that I have to do this and I have to be a nice person. When in actual fact, inside I don't actually feel like being a nice person. I don't actually feel like doing yes, this for you. Yes. Right. Right. So, 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 each, so, so that sorry. paragraph. Mm-hmm. 
has been taken out of context, perhaps, maybe, mm-hmm. right? That what we're doing is we're too busy trying to get validation from the external world and we're not validating ourselves and loving ourselves because only when we can love ourselves and what we are and who we are can we then give to our neighbour. Yes. Altruistically. Now, if when when I'm loving when I'm sitting on the couch and I'm I'm, I'm, I'm munching packets of crisps and eating sweeties like they're going into fashion because I don't date I hate. I hate myself. I hate yeah, myself. I'm the same and I go, to bed, <laughs> I go to bed every night and I say to me, I'm not going to do that tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then I have my dinner and then at six o'clock at night, I'm going into that car and I was saying to Frank, my behaviour around about chocolate became exactly the same as it did around drugs and alcohol. What I was doing was I was having my dinner, six o'clock at night, I was lying on the couch, I was getting myself set for the night, I might have even had my pyjamas on, and then I'd get that craving for the chocolate. I would go and jump in the car, pitch black, raining outside, get my jeans on, go round to the garage, and I'd buy a load of chocolate. I love myself. I started to become a liar to the woman that I don't even know that works behind the counter in the garage, was saying, oh, I love that and I better get that for such and such and I better get a wee something for such and such as well. I love myself. I was making out that I had these imaginary friends that I was buying chocolate for to justify why I've got this big pile of chocolate that I'm taking home every, <laughs> ni- every night, right? And I looked to it at Frank, I was like, I'm sick. I'm yep. absolutely sick. <laughs> and I had to stop that. Now, that's two weeks that I've been off sugar and I've been back being a bit whole green and organic. But the feeling of preparing food for myself is giving myself self a sense of love. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Aye. Are you following? Absolutely. I mean, again, I think it's about control. And I think right, what you're doing is you, you, like autonomy and control. I think you making, cooking for yourself, Things like, things like that, you're accepting, you're asserting your autonomy. I think, even, and I'm, I'm not sure about this because it's no my game, right? But maybe it is unconscious or subconsciously, but you no, know, drugs or alcohol or a million other things is a you no. Know, you're losing, you're seeding or you're, you're seeding your autonomy to other people or other. You're giving your power away. You're giving your power away, aye. You're giving your power You're away. Giving your power away. That's a good way of putting it. Uh, but I, I think the, the whole, you know, it's a bit, I think it's, I'll tell you where I, where I am just now is, I'm looking back at my life, and I, 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 no, I, I'm, I'm doing a 12 step program. I'm not at the bit now, but I'm coming to it. Aye, absolutely. But there's the bit about no regret in the past now. I have treated so many people horrendously. Now, before I was on you a You treated stage, yourself horrendously? Yes, yes. But it's, it's, see, getting to, to a stage when you're able to look at life and say, that was wrong. That was objective. But you didn't wrong. know what you didn't know. You didn't know what you didn't know at that <laughs> no, time. No, Absolutely, you aye. And if, you th- if you're, you're living in a culture where everybody's trying to be wide and fly with each other, then you can see why things like that would maybe happen. But it's getting to a stage where you can say, that, that objectively, to where I am right now, from my perspective, that was well, that's sub- subjectively, but that was wrong to act like that. So who is Surrender it? is surrender. Yeah, surrender. What you're looking for is to surrender. Surrender to yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people think, oh, I've got to ask for forgiveness from the outside world. I've got to do a list and see all the people that I've hurt. But if I was in a good place, I wouldn't have done their behaviours in the first place. Yeah, yep, absolutely. You know, but, but, but why are these things, why does, does these, this, these situations or context, context arise because you have got yourself into a position where you had to act in the... Because they felt it was acceptable I, to treat people. But again, can I use one one Can I say this is quite important? Women... Sex conduct. No, no, I, I would look at things in the past and would say, that was, un, that was dishonest. Di- treating people dishonestly is wrong. Mm-hmm. This is a big thing with me to know, and it's played in my mind all the time, about dishonesty with the way you treat people. Do you have to look at it as right or wrong, though? 
Because then you're still going into a divisional mindset. You're still going into a split mind, a split narrative of right or wrong. Are you aligned with how you behaved in the past? Yes or no? No. no. Would you no. be willing to let yourself off the hook for that? Not. Uh, I, I hope I'm moving towards that. What stop me, me if you're moving towards it? But, uh, well, I mean, but I, I think the 12 step programme yep. will, will help me. I, I don't think it'll help me. Keep showing it, up. It's helping me right now. Of course it However, is. I know there's a lot of kind of mountains to climb with the, yeah, within that programme. But the big thing for me is coming to terms with my behaviour in the past. Okay. That is a big burden for me. So as long as I'm no proud of, and uh, no, I, I'm no proud of a lot of things I've done. No, I joke sometimes about throwing tellies at your windies at parties and all that. I'm no proud of that now. Okay. So I'm no proud of you. acting in a certain way that when my behaviour affected other people had a detri detrimental effect on other people's lives. Of course. I'm finding that quite hard to come to to come to terms with. Right. So what stopped me from letting yourself off the hook? Don't know. So all those wrongs that you did, mm -hmm. okay, how does that make you feel when you think about them? It's T terrible, although less terrible now because I, at one so, stage I believe. So if you let it go, how would you feel? Well, you would feel a lot better. Okay, why don't you feel? Why don't you want to feel a lot better then? I do. Okay, so why don't you let go? <laughs> why don't you let it go? I know. What are you getting out of it? What fudge, flagellation could, could are you be, getting from well, it? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, like, brilliant, brilliant, and I like the way... Is that a good word, flagellation? Brilliant word, and I like the way you... Flagellation. Flagellation, brilliant. And I like the way you represent this whole figure, because part of it is, you want to keep whipping yourself, yeah. to hurt yourself, as if that, this is me, look, I'm fucking, I'm paying for the bad things I've done. Look at me, hurt myself. <laughs> <laughs> So that oh, is a that's a good way of we're, looking at We're really, really sick, aye, aren't we? Absolutely. Human beings are really aye. ill. Absolutely. Wow. wow. Absolutely. But it's wow. It, no but I think by the by it's better at some stage being able to come to terms with things that you've done or behaviours that you participated in. But the only person that's not letting you off the hook is yourself. Mm. So you want to walk about with the crucifix in your yes. back? So you're still hanging about in Galilee? <laughs> still there. <laughs> oh, you just wrap those barb... You, you just go into, the, go, into the, go into the farming depot and get that barbed wire and just wrap it around about your, wrap it around about your genitalia and flagellate yourself in it all day. Aye. Still not be happy. <laughs> so, what's stopping you from letting it go? What would that... It's like all, all, it's like all slaves want freedom, don't they? But when mm -hmm. you give them it, they don't know what to do with it. So if you were to let yourself off the hook for all the wrongs that you've done and be freed from guilt and the constraints of your own mind and you're whipping yourself, right? But this is a, 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 no, being free from the constraints the constraints of your own mind. Well, that can't happen, can it really? How do you free yourself from the constraints of your own mind? Because we're, we're, we're all struck, we've all got worldviews. When I see things in a certain... A narrative, you've got a certain a narrative, narrative, a narrative which we've all creates... Got which creates a dogma of how you live your yes, life. Yes, I, I, can I say something right now? It's, I, I'm sitting here now talking to you, I mean, oh, thank God I stopped drinking and all that, right? Thank God. However, I remember, yes. no, you, you had a major, major, major part to play in that, Ross. I mean, thank you. really quite fundamentally, you had a big part to play in that. But when I mean, you think back to you know, the, your life then, yeah. and you're stuck in a particular grooves, we were talking about Groove. grooves earlier, in a certain worldview, in certain grooves, and you kind of get out of the grooves, and you look at where you are now and you go like that. Wow. But then people are feeling sorry for you, thinking, that's short, you can't take it down. I know. <laughs> As if you're missing anything, when nothing could be further from the truth. You've been, you've kind of been around the world and you've been involved in a charity that's done brilliant things, and you've been Lift. back to university a couple of times. <laughs> so there's nothing, you're no loss in anything, but. Or well, folk, folk look and go, folk go, he used to be an alcoholic. <laughs> he used to be an alcoholic. I'm and a raving alcoholic. I'm no one new. I'm a raving alcoholic. But, but what I'm saying is, it's like with certain particular grooves and only seeing the world, a certain world, and not being able to conceptualise a different world, a different way of living, a different way of being. Why, isn't that why people stay in destructive relationships and yep. the, 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 the violent relationships and... 
it's, it's, it's horrible relationships. It's so hard. To, it's, it, because most people can't admit, this has not work for me, I need to try something else. Feeling that, I'm going to need to front it and kid on, I'm dead happy. Uh-huh. Pretend I'm dead happy. Yeah. Or otherwise, face up to the consequences that I've made a mistake somewhere along the line. I need to change the groove. I need to change the world view and move into a different dispensation to the dispensation you were in earlier. Absolutely. It's one way of looking at it, I think, you know. So many people are living in relationships where they're not happy, but it's but what yeah. they want to do is they want to blame the, the other person, their partner, on their unhappiness. They want to they want to make the outer responsible mm-hmm. for their unhappiness and very few people are turning around and saying, It's actually me that's no happy it's me. So it's like, well, why are you in a relationship with a man or a woman that doesn't come home? They go out on a Friday night and don't come home to a Sunday. Why are you in a relationship with that? What are you getting out of it? Oh, I'm not getting anything out of it. You know what I mean? Or oh, I'm not hard, they're doing my nut in, they're just doing my head in. But, but can I say something here as well? Like, we're talking about that, that type of thing, that type of behaviour, no disappearing in a, going out on a Friday, no coming back to a Sunday night. I've done all that type of stuff, and I shouldn't have. I went to a party when I was 14 and never came home until I was 20. I, I had to take, why you, I used to say, I used to say, wow. I went wow. into the sub club in 1985 or something, 1886, I came out in the year of culture, <laughs> 1990. But, but, but what I was going to say there was, so true. But no, how can you build a decent relationship on that type of lie, if you like, no, that, where you're not treating somebody as an equal? Because you're not treating yourself like an equal. Aye. You've not got a relationship with yourself. You're trying to get the outside world to validate you and Aye. meet your needs. It's not their job to meet your needs. Mm-hmm. It's my job to meet Aye. my needs. Yeah. yeah. It's like what happens is you get into a relationship with a man or a woman. This is just from my perspective, right? You get into a relationship with a man or a woman and you give them the keys to your garden, right? And they come in and they start cutting your grass, right? And they cut your grass for... You know, and they cut your hedges and they plant plants and all the rest of it. And then whether it's a month or a year or ten years down the line, you actually go up and have a look at how they've cut your grass and planted plants and it's an absolute disaster. Absolute disaster. Right? And then you blame them. Mm-hmm. You get you get angry and yep, destructive aye. and blame them. A wee bit but, like letting somebody else live rent free in your head. Aye. Or or look, see the thing you see about external validation. That's a big thing I know. Is you no know, wanting to portray a perfect representation of the self and it's usually via social media because we're all social media animals to an extent now and but that is where things happen uh-huh. you know big boy. but it's all so done to, uh, big boy. <laughs> but, uh, it's so done to try to, uh, to, uh, to represent yourself in a certain way yep. and, and we're, all, seen we're all perfect as a and nobody's ever worries. done anything wrong yeah 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 and our life's really really good as long as we keep showing we've got a new this and we've got a new that is it, I, is it, is it, another thing as well is but i think it's quite important is well it's get really important for me is is I, I, I try and do a motivational kind of wee post every morning to facebook they're great I, I, they're, 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 but I, the, the reason i'm doing no it's like you get to a stage in your life and you say what if i could say one thing here that might help one other person. Amazing. That's why I did it. It's amazing. Because you want to help. Well, I mean, that's where I'm in my life. No, it's like, I don't want to damage or hurt another human being. Which is yourself. You don't want to hurt yourself Aye, anymore. But this is it. So, in terms of looking for, no, getting that internal validation that you're doing the right thing. I know I'm doing the right thing, but if I can do the right thing, and ultimately we are selfish people in the sense that we want to help ourselves, but if I can do something or write something that can, uh, can help somebody else, why would I not want to do that? Of course. You of know? course. And no one paid for it. And no one I, And no one thanked for it. No, it's like, you, but you get to a stage in your life, I'm like, no, how much money do you, I don't need a lot of money. No. I'm not that type of person. No. If I've got a downfall, it's that I like nice jackets. That's it. Don't know, I'm still Nothing wearing, else. I'm still wearing handy downs. Do you know, but I, I, I'm no, I'm no, I know it's like, I don't need a lot. We don't. We need love. I, we need love. We need connection and we need a laugh. No. We need a laugh. Of course we do. We need a laugh. We really need to be laughing more. That's, that's real laugh. It's real belly laugh. It's no, mm-hmm. it's no laughing through drink and through drugs. Aye. It's, uh, we've got a, you know, I've got to take my hat off to, to drugs, you know, because they won the war on drugs, didn't they? Drugs won. 
The war on drugs uh, has been going that's, on for... But that's not... That, it's that, like that's, everybody's... It's just, it's everywhere that, and it's that, so, so, so sad. Aye. My issue with, with the whole conception of the war on drugs, right? People who want to take drugs are going to grab it on and on and on about the war on drugs has failed. People who have never taken drugs are going to keep going on about the midst of a war on drugs. I prefer to take the position that I take the now. I, I'm not look. See if people want to take drugs, they're going to get drugs. Of course they are. People want to drink alcohol, they're going to get alcohol. People want to watch porn, they're going to get porn. No, these things are always there and they always will be there. I'm only trying to speak from my perspective, and my perspective is that your life is a million times better but if you don't re- need to rely on these things. Absolutely. You know, but folk don't want and to get a chance. And if you go on about chance. prohibition, for, no, they don't want to get a they chance. They don't want to get a chance. And people, and the problem is, if you've PR'd something, the way I PR'd kind of the drug subcultures or drinking subcultures, if you've PR'd these, these ways of living, haven't they turned around and say, I was, I was wrong? It's dead hard for people. So I know for a fact a lot of people are caught up in stuff, even that they know. People at my age and people older than me, you know, and maybe a lot older than me, are caught up in things, but then they've no good. They, they, it's like being able to turn around and say, look, I, I was wrong. It's too hard. So they're going to keep doing what they're doing, and they're going to maybe die prematurely because they, they're going to keep doing what they're doing rather than say, but they're I'm dead going when to they're alive. Back. You're dead when you're alive right. if you're abusing drugs and alcohol because right. you can, you're not present. No, you're you not, can't be right. present. You're right. You know, it looks as if you're living. Aye. But you're not living. You're dead inside. I think that's... There's no spark. There's no candle. Yep. I think, uh, no although you might kid yourself on that there's some sort of a illusion that you're living a kind of productive life, but you're not really. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're, you're dead. You're right. That's a, it's the... You're, I can, again, I'm only speaking for myself. In every sort of a... Looking at my life, my professional life, my public life, my private life, is all moved forward. And it keeps moving forward for me if I do the right thing. Do you find that scary that it moves forward? Sometimes very much so. So when you've got... When you've got your world set up in such a way where there's patterns of behaviour, be them destructive, but it's the same thing, it's drugs and alcohol, drugs yes. and alcohol, drugs and alcohol, your world becomes quite a small cage. Yes. But when the walls of the drugs and alcohol come down, the world becomes a much more expansive, um, generating place to inhabit. Well, and I mean, that I, can I, be I, scary. I, 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 Embracing new realities is yeah, scary for It's terrifying. People. It's you know, terrifying. So I understand totally why it would be a lot easier to just go, keep doing what you're doing. But, so I'll you're embracing another way of doing things. I'll keep controlling the prevailing orthodox of every Friday night I get mad with it. And then my brain hasn't regenerated properly. Mm-hmm. By the Thursday yeah. you feel a wee bit better. Yeah. And the first thing you think of when you feel a wee bit better is, I'm going to get out of my nut again. I'm going to get mad with it. Yep. So you're mad with it Friday, Saturday, and then your brain's like all shut down, and then come about the Thursday, you then start to get the spark, and that's when the phone calls start, and it's like, MD going out, MD going out, what's happening? You get mm-hmm. mad with it. Right. Who's getting a bit? See, I, I think it's, don't it, it's, it's worldviews, and it's easy to get stuck in worldviews. Mm-hmm. I'm the first, I'm a, no, I, I was absolutely... St- phoning you. I don't. Is that important? No, sorry. How funny. No, I know. Mental, isn't it? But what I was going to say, said so. yeah. I've lived the lie, lived my own life for the other, lived in my shadows, but not now. I'm out for my, I'm out my own cage. It's good to get out of the cage, isn't it? But, but, absolutely. She's lovely. But what I think is, a big thing is, it's so hard. Look, I, I've been stuck in a number of cages in my life. Relationship cage. Relationship cages. <laughs> but, you You're know, the tiger chasing I did, you. I did indeed, I, but I, that's my fault because I put myself into that position. At the same time, you get stuck in, I, you know, this is a big thing for me, you know, is thought processes and worldviews and having to turn around and say, I believe, there are a lot of things I believed in, absolute drivel, yeah. nonsense. Yeah. That, no, that, 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 no, but, but no, 
I stayed stuck to a lot of kind of ultra left theories and perspectives that, but you know, despite the fact that these ultra left theories and perspectives were responsible for the death of maybe 80 to 100 million people in the last hundred years. I still try to to be out. No, it's like being caught in defending yourself, it, defending your own narrative. Thing, to defending keep you your safe. own narrative to keep you saying because you can't turn around and say I was wrong. I don't believe that anymore. Now that is a big thing for me, having to turn around and say no, I'm wrong. Yeah, it's the most liberating thing in the world. Or even I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I'm willing. I, I'm yeah, willing. Yeah, to mm. humour the fact that my thinking here might be wrong yeah that, that this is a problem when you're stuck stuck in political or ideological uh, ways of thinking you want to stick to these orthodoxies because you're scared to challenge the dominant or whether it's a an external or an external orthodoxy or an internal something you've internalized mm -hmm. it's like you end up saying well am i am i actually looking at things that i've said or done am i having a no am i saying that my lifetime it's difficult to admit you've been wrong or to, I'll, I'll say it a better way than that, rather than speaking about things being right or wrong or correct or incorrect, it's saying embracing new thinking. Now I remember years, and I said this, you, you interviewed me about maybe six months ago or so, just at the start of the lockdown, and, and I, I remember saying, and I always remember say, think this was a great thing, that the Reverend Ian Paisley, I remember see, see, seeing him being interviewed maybe 25 years ago, and he said, I'll go to the grave with the same beliefs I've had when I was a wee boy. Whoa. He wasn't just talking about his religious beliefs, he's talking about his political beliefs, and maybe the way he's seen it, oh, his, his sociology, how the world, the, the world is organised that. It's a close mindset for you. It's a close mindset, now, I, but I thought that was brilliant. Because he's staying righteousness. Right, I know, but he's staying loyal to his political beliefs. I, I see that now as a form, a major form of weakness. Mm -hmm. that, 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 I, I've done that for thirty or forty years. I, no, I will not listen to what MDL says because I know better than everybody else. See, if you have started, I am right. I'm right. I'm right. From I've, from I've started reassessing and looking at stuff from a different perspective. It's been the most liberating experience for me in the last 10 years. It's been difficult as well, because a lot of the stuff I'm going like, oh, I can't say that, I can't believe that. It's just been getting liberated for you. I mean, the, the biggest thing for me at the moment is I detest PC culture. I detest the homogenisation of culture eh, and the way culture is getting policed, the language is getting policed. People are, you know, there's certain words that you can say, there's certain words that you can't say. People that maybe look at the world, for an example, uh, Harry wrote uh, Harry Potter. Rowling. Rowling, J.K. Rowling. No, she's a lefty. She, she, she broadly speaking, would be, would be, would be left-wing in most things. Because she questions, questioned transgender culture, she's had a hell of a time here. No, so it's stuff like that concerns me. The biggest thing for me now is so it's stopping us from exploring. Yes. Uh, oh, it's, it's stopping us. It's destroyed it's academia. Yeah. I mean, yeah. academia's getting absolutely destroyed with yeah. PC culture, yeah. telling people what they can believe, telling people what they can't believe. Views that are acceptable, views that are unacceptable. Uh, and that, whatever, they all very well saying that's got nothing to do with me. What happens in academia filters down into the wider society. You know, now people should be able to go to academia, people should go to university to embrace change and to learn about things and diversity. Absolutely. If culture's getting policed to such an extent that it goes into the academy and within the context of academia and universities, views are getting filtered and they're getting more more sort of a there's less rigid rigid that's it's it. rigid, there's no Aye. place for and if when when <laughs> things become so rigid they've only got one thing to do. Which is snap. Because you need flexibility, you yeah. need to teach flexibility. Yeah. I mean, when I was younger, in the 1980s, for say, culture, you know, you were a wow. rebel. You were a rebel if you stood up against the kind of, the dominant culture. The dominant culture at the time was Thatcherism, uh, conservatism, conservatism, and a lot of other stuff as well. You were a rebel to stand up against that. What's happened now, in my opinion, 
You know, this, again, it's all down to sub subjectivity here. Uh, I see society have been changed that much now you that you if you stand up against these new prevailing dominant orthodoxies, now it doesn't matter if it's in, you know, you see it in the world of journalism, you see it in, and I can you definitely see it in universities, uh, you see it in culture, you see everybody, everybody all saying the same thing, and that same thing is all getting, getting, uh, getting, uh, sorry, we're talking about, getting articulated or verbalised within a, a slowly, a slow, a restrictive culture. But the culture's been restrictive. And if you, if you, you t have views out with these dominant theories, you're sort of, sort of a demonised, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And what I, see, what I see it happening now is it's happening a lot more to people who would take a left, a sort of a right, a left, a, a right a centre perspective. I mean, 10% of university students, roughly, roughly 10% of university students uh, verbalise that they're, they're, they're right a right right centre mm -hmm. in political terms. And there's also stuff there that I've read recently, some research that was done about Brexit, and a lot of, you know, the amount of right-wing students who were scared, who were reticent to verbalise to their fellow students that they were against Brexit. Mm -hmm. In case they got pushed out. In case they get, oh, get, get marginalised. Marginalised. With, with their friends and that. So but isn't that the same with the drug use? But Pro going back to that with drug use, is there is. child kids not wanting to aye. not be doing it because yeah. they were getting marginalised? Yeah, yeah. Aye. That, that's, it's happening I mean, all across the board. Yeah. It's, so what I'm trying to say is that the big thing for me now is the left or right in terms of politics or in terms of personal behaviour it's the worst thing in the world is the peer pressure or people feeling they need to act in a certain way is so, so, so dangerous. I think it's, no. I, I, can I just, I want to tell you something. I remember in the, going to school, going to the first year at Our Ladies High School in Motherwell, getting on uh, the bus from Moss End, but to get the bus, because it was five or six miles away. So you get a free bus pass, and there was maybe nine from the, I went to Holy Family Primary School, maybe nine in the bus, going to our ladies' high school. There was two guys in the bus. I remember sitting in the middle of the bus. Mm -hmm. This is as sure as God. Sitting in the middle of the bus. There was two guys, I'll not mention them there, I'll not mention any names here. Two guys uh, on one side and maybe five guys on the other side. The two guys on one side were the two guys that were going to go on. One became a doctor. One became a lawyer. Uh, there was me in the middle. And there was all these other boys, boys carrying on, had stole markers at the school, writing their name up the back of the bus and all that. Now, I, I sure as God, I remember this as clear as anything, sitting up the back of that bus and going like that. Where am I going to fit in here? Am I going to go with the guys that are going to ch achieve? They're not going to fit in with a gang or anything like that, but they're going to achieve. Or am I going to jump in and get accepted with the, the kind of the dominant peer group, if you like, yeah. that's going to be getting in a bit of trouble and carrying on and end up yeah. dogging the school and all that. I went... So you were looking for acceptance? Acceptance. You so were wanting acceptance for perhaps a mindset that you felt you were more aligned with, maybe yes. more of a lower working class mindset? Absolutely. Or... Yeah, I think I that, felt, <laughs> I mean, even saying that work now, working class, mm -hmm. I felt, am I going to get marginalised for saying that? You know, no, but no, you're yeah, absolutely mindset. right. But no, it's like so. I always looked, and I always honestly believe I never ever fit it in. But you know, didn't you feel but, you but when I did try and fit in, I tried to fit in to the madness. Mm -hmm. I never tried to fit in. I didn't because I didn't really feel I belonged there either. I always yeah. felt there was a wee bit of a difference. Maybe because my mother was from a rural background. Yeah. My dad's from an industrial background. So there was a wee, wee things like that as well that were, were important. But my, 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 my idea of fitting in was fitting in the easy option. But it would have been a lot about it now, I didn't what would have been the easy option from this perspective? You thought that was the easy option at the time, but what would have the easy option have been? He, he, well, how much heartache and pain have you had? Ah, oh, that's exactly that, you know. But and you know, you see, so you say, how could your life have been so different? I well, mean, I, met I also you, say, I met you for the first time at 
I think it was a Motherwell Civic or it was a Cloud Nine. Cloud Nine. Club Nine. Club Nine. Club Cloud Nine. Club that was in Cloud Nine. We were on Cloud Nine. We were on Cloud Nine. <laughs> and I would have only have been about 16 year old. What would that have been? I was born in 72, 16, 1988, 1989. Probably. Aye, I, that met you in about, about that time. I met you in about 1989 and I was partying solid for there to 93, hard at it. And then I had to make a change. I had to make a change. And um, and then you were lucky. Four years. I was forty years. <laughs> well, that's an exaggeration. Aye, no. But then I kept drinking because I gave Aye. up. I gave up the 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 the, the, the love affair with chemicals. Yep. And uh, because alcohol was socially acceptable, alcohol and marijuana was my drug for so many years, and I could safely say that that's fifteen years now. I've enjoyed sobriety from alcohol and the madness and the chaos. But we're still addicted, aren't we? We're still addicted to... I mean, it's, the, one of the main issues is, I think, social media has fundamentally transformed reality for everybody. Yeah. Even people are on social media, but social media has transformed reality in the sense that the people that, with, without social... I mean, it's, a, it's been a great positive thing yes, it's also been ways. a very much a negative yep. thing for a yep. lot of people yep. uh, and for some people it's been positive and negative but you can look at social media and say well it's put you in touch with people for good or for good or ill yep. but you would have been no contact yep. me for god knows how long mm-hmm. and you know but they, they, they don't necessarily do, because you're in touch it, with people it's causing necessarily, a comparison culture yes very much so and you know you see people <laughs> My new car. Oh, <laughs> they're my new Merc and all that type of there's stuff. There's him climbing a mountain again. There's I, him climbing a mountain I, I, again. I, 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 Does he know, ever work there? He's having a coffee with Frank. My I, week. You know, I, I, oh, what's he doing? But, but, you're, but this is the thing. You Try as hard as you might, you're never going to get everybody to like you. Absolutely no, not. And but the only person that you need to like you is yourself. Is yourself. We just need, it doesn't matter. Aye, aye. See, that, this is a good thing. Then you're I, never lonely. I, that, I, and th- this is where I think I'm moving towards it myself, is, see, there's no needing external validation. Absolutely. I remember discussing this with you 10 years ago yeah. about external validation. I feel as if the big thing for me is getting comfortable in yourself and thinking, Look, I don't actively want MD know to like me. But see, if you don't like me, it doesn't really matter. matter. And I you don't know, need to put any energy anymore. into changing your mind. I, yes. You're entitled that's, to that. That's where I'm finding myself, you know. Because when you're looking at step four, five stuff, resentment stuff, and, you know, starting to mm-hmm. look into those kind of resentment stuff, and, you know, when we have resentments, we've never truly got a resentment towards anybody out there. Mm-hmm. The resentment that we've got is to ourselves. Yep, first absolutely. set ourselves up yep. in the first place to pioneer. I'll organise that. I'll do that. And then you resent folk for not doing the same amount of work. Yes. Well, well, who was it that set ourselves up to spearhead this project? Yep. For what reason? I mean, to get your needs I, met? Absolutely. To I mean, get I, liked? I, um, but this is, this is a bit of flagellation. See good well thing, done, Frank. I, You're a good boy. I, we see the thing being able to get to a stage where... You know, I made myself unwell there. I made myself unwell by taking on too much. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I, I got myself, this is, the way I sort of ended up seeing things was, if I, give, if I don't know if anything, if I take a step back to anything I'm doing here, my whole life's going to fall apart. It's quite crumble. Aye, you know. Aye. And that is and one does of the it? worst. No, it doesn't help. <laughs> but you, you think that no, you, you've got to keep you, you've got to keep doing things. And a lot of that is due to people pleasing as well. People, people are totally. Now getting to a stage where you don't feel the need to people please is a brilliant thing. Or getting the, the main thing is to get to a stage where you think, see, if, no, I don't want people not to like. But you don't want people not to like you. But getting to a stage where you're like, I'm not going to group my way to offend anyone here. With any words I say or anything I say or anything that so uh, matters, but see if it, see if they still don't like you. Fucking know much you can do about it, and it's just getting to that stage thinking, fair enough. See that when somebody say you see yourself in a picture, or you see yourself in a picture or something like that at a night out, and you cringe because you hate seeing it. See, you get to a place where you can see a picture of yourself and smile at yourself and think, God, you're doing all right for nearly 50. Aye. You're doing all right for nearly 60. But I'm only you know? 49, but uh. I've transitioned. <laughs> <laughs> <As I've> got... <laughs> well, that's what we were talking about. That's why we started sitting here doing this, that uh, 
I'm 48 in November. I came back 10 years ago for this soul night. Soul night. I came back 10 years ago from Atlanta, Georgia for this soul night for the week and to have my birthday before I flew. And I think, I can't mind if I left here and went to Holland to work for a week. But anyway, I come back and uh, I would have been your age when we, yes. when we met. And then 10 years from now, I'm going to be your age. Yes. It's just... Time's going so fast it? that there's absolutely not one that I do not have any space. Truthfully, I have no space in my life for people that do not, um, things that do not make me feel good. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's like, you know, it's and like, why, why wow. should you? Wow. And sometimes I, I think about people, I ruminate about people in my head that might have done me wrong and they get in for about two seconds and I can genuinely catch it now notice how it right. makes me feel inside eradicate those thoughts just delete that program I used to carry folk about with me in my head for days yeah me too for days me too months I, I, carrying them I, 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 like, I, I, whatever I, I, I posted something this morning on Facebook I can't admit resentment is like drinking poison and expecting and them to die, name to die. and it never a true word be said I absolutely all you do is destroy yourself totally and I ain't you know, doing that. It's just not worth it. No, 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 no. I lost five years in my life after I split up with my partner. Mm -hmm. Five years? That's 10% of my life. I ain't never getting that back. I know. And do you know what? I am so grateful for where I am now. Oh, absolutely. So, so grateful. I am like, I am like living the best. I'm having such a great time right now. It's amazing. Absolutely incredible, spiritually, emotionally. And it's just, do you know what it is? It's just stop being a knob. <laughs> it's that simple. Just be a good. Just do the right thing. Aye. It's right simple. Aye. And, and be able to look, reflect on stuff, and be able to say, I had a part to play in that. Aye. You know what I mean? And this is a I big had a part thing. To play in that. Instead of blaming everybody else for your problems, have, have the bottle to just go like, no. I was to blame. I get myself. I, I put I, myself in the positions. Position. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you get to a you know, point... You know, I put myself in the positions. You get to a point where they've got their narrative, you've got your narrative, and then there's the truth. It take, there, it's a, I, have, yep. I, I cannot tolerate, or I find it difficult to tolerate, the mindset that can totally align with, um, you know, uh, my parents divorced. Most of my life, I thought it was my dad's fault. Mm, was it just my dad's no. fault? Dad, it's never no, like that. It's, it's never, never like that. that. But they want to ideal it. Oh, I, 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 I. They want to just keep feeding it. They're the, 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 there's two sides to every story, and yeah. then there's the truth. Yeah. And I want to walk in the truth now. Aye. I don't want to walk in either side of a fabricated narrative. It's just like, Aye. wow. I, 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 you can, you can, that's one of the things that can, it can go on and drag you down. And drag you down. Can't 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 shut me up. The manager said he'll make you shoot me and shut me up. I know. <laughs> Stop being a knob. Actual laughing out loud, Patricia. Just don't be in an off. That's it. It's just like live the best way. It just doesn't it? Yeah. It's I mean, that simple. I, I do think a lot of this stuff, you no, know, and it's not. There's, did you, somebody said there's no manual for how to live. There is. There is, get, there is a manual, I guess. The, 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 the New Testament's a pretty. The way that it was pressed upon us, you know, and how doctrine and religion was put upon us, no, but really accept, forgive, you know, live for your heart. The 12 steps, acceptance, mm -hmm. and step one and step 12. Step one, accept you're a knob. Step 12, once you've realised you're a knob, just give yourself to things. Mm -hmm. It's that simple, isn't it? Aye. There's a load of great wisdom in between step two, three, aye. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, but step one, accept you're a knob, you've aye. made a mistake. Aye, aye, and aye. then once you've realised that, don't do it again and give yourself that, fully. This is one of the big give things. Give yourself fully to things. I'm, no, it's like, I, it takes me a while to get things. Once I get them, I get them. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole the thing about the acceptance... Oh, the chips look good. The, the acceptance thing is a wee thing that's took me a while to get, get my head around about mm -hmm. in terms of the 12-step programme. Accepting. That you're and powerless. Not, I, accepting. Oh, I, this is a big, massive thing. Mm -hmm. That's being able to say, I'm powerless. Yep. I'm powerless over drugs. I'm powerless over alcohol. I'm powerless over chocolate. My own stinking thinking. Aye. I'm, I'm powerless over this machine that's running my reality. Aye. Yep because it's been conditioned from a, uh, a, a, a pre-conscious level 
you know, I yep. was conditioned for a reality that I've inhabited before I even came to this world. I was incubated in a womb for nine months that my mother was experiencing, right. and then I come to this reality and just start replicating programs. But I, I'm, 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 I'm just living for old scripts and schemas and replicating I, and doing the same patterns of behaviour over yep. and over and over again. I, I can I say that that is a, see that that is massive. See that being able to live. See being able to you no, know, being able to conceptualise a context to see a different world for the for the groove that you've been stuck in. Yeah, is the most rewarding thing ever. Absolutely, from my personal point of view, because I have seen a particular way of living. Can we shut up? We're on live for dinner. We're on live. You? Come on in. Oh, yeah. Come on, Rune, and just in. say what you just said there. Oh, yeah. so I'm actually to Hollywood. I'm to, I make films in Hollywood. So, right, we'll we, just, we just decided, Frank and I, to share a message of hope to people that might be struggling with addiction, I suffer, right? I, I suffer um, with addiction and mental health problems. And you've been sitting listening to us, and you felt lot, called to come out and, and tell lot, us. A lot of, um, it's amazing. A lot yeah. of, so, like, so paranoia, has it helped you? Paranoia, a lot of poison towards people and stuff like that. So everything you have just said, I listened to and it's helped have we helped me you? in that space of time, yeah. That's, that's God bless you. Yes. God bless you. That's How wonderful you've been so happy. No, I'm well chuffed, I'm like... I just took everything you said and I'm like... We're just doing a wee Facebook thing on live. Brilliant, pal. Because I'm just going through the same thing as myself. Well, don't do it alone. Well, you know. You're welcome. Good stuff, God bless you. There you go. Isn't that amazing? There you go. And on that merry note, I think we'll call it a day after the Brilliant, man. Right? Wish you all the very best. Peace out from the Hilton and Bells Hill, Frank Devine and Ross Hislop. Keep it real. Brotherly love as always. Peace out. All the best.